Good evening. Thank you for talking to Guitar and Bass magazine. Now we've just been on stage and I've looked at your gear. As splendid as it is, it's pretty simple. Yep, I've just moved back to Ashdown. Yeah. Gone back to the classic amp, valves, and uh, simple, just bass, treble, and middle. Yeah. And volume. I love it. I don't like all the overload graphics and all that. I, I've gone back to the old school. Much better. What's, what's it like then, Wilco, for you getting on stage and hearing Norman's back playing, backing you up? Was well, you know, we reckon it's really good. He, he can play really good. <laughs> Does it make you play yeah. differently when you're away from it? Uh, I don't know, because I'm always <laughs> working <laughs> with him. I tried it with somebody else yeah. one time and said, but perhaps I'm completely pathetic. <laughs> The guitar I use is a Fender official Wilco Johnson Telecaster and um, it is in fact an absolutely bog standard as near as I could get to a sort of 1962 Telecaster and, and uh, you know, I'm like Norman says, right? I like everything very very basic and so I play this guitar, usually it's, it sets on the back pickup, volume right up, tone right up, that's it, don't use any uh, effects pedals or anything like that, I plug it straight into amplifier, which is a Cornell amplifier. It's, again, it's a, a Wilco, Cornell Wilco amplifier. Yeah. But anyway, these Cornell amplifiers are absolutely great. They are, he makes them, they, they are made by hand. You know, there's no printed circuits in there or anything. And I haven't explained all this to me. But anyway, it's a very simple combo. It's got a single speaker uh, and it's got volume, treble and bass. <laughs> And on and off, and that's it. And that which I like. And, and in fact, the volume and treble and bass, I set them all about halfway up, so everything's all. That's what. And then I, I don't really change anything. On a couple of numbers, I might use the front pickup on the Telecaster, yeah. but generally speaking, it's just like that. I don't alter it in any way when I'm playing. N nor your guitar controls. You keep your guitar no, on no, everything. No, no. So. I mean, it's all turned right up. You yeah. see. But because in fact, I mean, because that's what you do without all that. You just have a, <laughs> just have a wire going. You, but no, but you don't because actually you want it because it looks nice. But to, but, the, but these uh, knobs I never actually used. No. <laughs> <laughs> just it's so both up at number eleven and that's it. Right? Yeah. play a Telecaster and the, for no other reason that, that I'm, you know, sort of hero, you've seen heroes playing Telecaster, yeah. oh, I'll have one, right? I'll, I'll, you know, it's what you do with it, then it's something else. And it's quite, it's become quite an iconic thing for you, the black, the red scratch play, everything. Indeed. I mean, when you pick that up and go on stage, people react to it straight away, don't they? Does that not get the hairs on the back of your neck, kind of? I haven't got very many hairs on the back of my neck. I mean, I wouldn't want to use any other guitar. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, but it, it, you know, I don't know what you're doing. You're going out. You're just going out to do a performance, really. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, the guitar's part of it. And I suppose there's some. I mean, I, I like tele. I've got a Stratocaster, 1962, and I like I love Stratocaster because they look so beautiful mm. and they're great sounding. But the kind of uh, sound I make, it's all, it's, kind of, it's rhythm, you know, yeah. and it's kind of chopping chords and that, which the telecast is very good for. 
Yeah, and that's that's key to your playing, isn't it? That rhythmic chop. Well, uh, yeah, I, was, I think of myself as a rhythm guitarist. Yeah. Um, so, which is a good point just to, to kind of to kind of end review, Norman. It's that when you hit, have that very Wilco's very choppy rhythmic playing, how does that affect your bass playing? I mean, are, you playing are you playing with it? Or are you trying to follow? Or are you just locked into your drums? I don't know how really he does. Do, I don't know how he does what he does because it sounds like rhythm and lead to me. So I just put my bass on it. That's all. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I don't know. It's the fantastic rhythm section. I mean, Dylan's a great drummer, yeah, yeah. and and uh, no one. Oh, I'm just stop. And he's he's saying, "I wave my arms about." You know, yeah. no. It, it, the whole. I think the whole thing is very based on rhythm. You know, women, and it, women and, and rhythm you section just first. Yeah, yeah, and you just you just lock in naturally to the rhythm. I mean, how does it work? I don't know how it happens. It happens, it you know. But every probably if you analyse what's actually going on, it would sound quite complicated. But all it really is is one, two, three, four. And if you can get that right, you know, surprisingly, how many people can't actually? No, really, you know. The, but but if you have not got an absolutely it should be absolutely right at the level of the rhythm section. So, I mean, with us, that's yeah. that's the whole thing. You know, it's a three-piece, you know. But, I mean, like, if you've got if you've got a 20-piece, a huge band with different sections and that, if you ain't got the this rhythm yeah. section there, then it doesn't work. No. So, finally, then, you've got your Best Of album out. That's doing rather well. So... <laughs> So, I mean, what's it like? You're, you're still on the road, you're still packing out venues, you've got an album out, you know, what's next? Well, we're, we're going to make, we're gonna make we're an gonna, album we're next week. We've a new one, we? yeah, we're making a new album. I mean, out. of course, it's just been stupid for me because actually I'm supposed to be dead. Yes. And, and like, I've got, uh, now I'm thinking this, it, well, it's just mad. Like, I'm 70 this year, and and uh, I, I was only supposed to get to 64 or something, 60, you know, like. <laughs> That all happened, and then, and then, doing this album with Roger Daltrey as a sort of farewell. I really thought it was going to be the last thing I ever did, and then it turns out to be a massive seller. And then you suddenly find, where the whole thing's happening? And we're doing the album all this year, and and all of that, you know. Going to Japan again it, this it year as well. It don't make any. No, it's, it really is quite when I think I, I still contrive to be miserable all the time, though. <laughs> Hate it. Right. Yeah. So, you're both happy, healthy, and well. That's and, it. Yeah. And miserable. Yeah. Yeah, and miserable with it. Oh, yeah. He's not miserable, man. I'm never miserable. He's all the bleeding. I don't know. I love it. Yeah, me. You know, can't you say what a drag <laughs> it is? Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, thank you so much for talking to us. It's been a pleasure. And have a great gig. We're going to be there watching you and getting stuck in with it all. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot.